Episode 1, The School Transformation. Let's make today the day that will transform your work, your health, and your life. You'll learn how at the School of Transformation. Welcome to the School of Transformation, where each week you'll gain insights from top performers and experts that will offer you their advice and strategies that can help you reach higher levels of performance. And now, your host, Bob Cho. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of the School of Transformation podcast. And my guest today is Jeanette Ortega. She's a former WBFF pro which means she's competed as a fitness competitor in many contests. She's also founder of Extreme Results Fitness in Northridge, California. She's a two-times best-selling author, certified life coach, founder of the Butoga System. She's also a certified yoga instructor. She's created her own meditation CDs with, with many more to come. And more important, and what I really love about her, is that she gives back. After being certified as a yoga instructor and taking her specialized system, she went down to Belize and she worked helping give to a school down there, helping these these amazing kids really get in touch in mind, body, and spirit. I can't say enough about her. Jeanette, I am so happy to have you. Ah, thank you so much, Bob. That was such a beautiful introduction. I'm so honored to be your first guest. Thank you so much. I'm very excited for this. And those of you listening, this is an amazing man. So this is going to be one of the best podcasts to listen to for School of Transformation, for sure. Thank you. Well, Jeanette. One of the things I'm going to ask of, of every, every single guest, and you're no exception, just because you're my friend, <laughs> because it's really important, and the reason I cause the school of transformation is to find that, that transformation. And within you, I would like to know, what is your greatest transformation? Okay? Well, there's been so many um, so to actually think back of my greatest transformation, I would have to say it was more of my spiritual and emotional transformation. Since being in the health and fitness world for so long, I did competitions all my years. And so I really got to be um, well versed in how to take my body to a whole different level. So those were huge transformations for me. But the biggest transformation was really realizing when even when I'd win and I'd have these great awards that there was still something missing for me. And so to put my finger on it, it was really my own spiritual growth and my own emotional growth of really going through all of that and taking a whole new look and perspective on my life as a whole. Not just fitness, but what does fitness truly mean to me? And truly fitness means being balanced and well and fit in your mind and your body and your spirit. And so I had the body piece down, but the spirit and the mind were still trying to catch up. There was a lot of work that I had to do. So going through that transformation has opened myself up to so many different opportunities, so many things to clear up even from my past it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work going through those emotional transformations. So what was a specific moment or specific time that, in in your case, what was it that maybe it was a, a, a down point or that allowed you to question yourself or something like that of who you were that maybe even caused some pain? Was there anything specific that, that you that you can actually think about? Yes, there's many. But one that came to my head as soon as you asked the question was, here I've owned my, my gym for over eight years and been in the fitness industry for over 20. But owning the actual facility, there was, gosh, probably at least two years 
where no matter how much I had accomplished, it still wasn't enough. So the gym at one point, one year, I just was not happy and it wasn't bringing in the revenue it needed to bring in. It seems like more people were, were going out and I was having an influx of new people, which was awesome. But I was like, what is going on with me? Do I actually have what it takes to make this business work? Do I know what I'm doing? What's going on? What am I missing? What am I not seeing? And it brought me down to my knees. I really started crying thinking, what am I doing? Like it started really getting to my head. Like, what am I missing? What am I not providing? Yet I was providing a whole different realm for people, not even realizing that I was. But I had to see it first for myself. And it was a very distinct day where I was looking through. And as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, we always have these ups and downs for sure. And you learn how to go through them. But this was one that was so deep and it seemed like it was lasting for so long that it literally brought me to my knees crying like, what am I not doing? And I really realized that I had to release a lot of control and I really had to allow what I'm truly gifted in bringing. And that wasn't just fitness, but it was also in bringing peace to people and giving their emotion, helping them through their emotional breakthroughs. But I wasn't allowing myself to really be seen that way. Why do you think that you were, were going through this process? Was there anything outside or inside that allowed you, number one, to see what, what you were going through in, in terms of that? And number two, finding that, that, that discovery, because I know that you said you like dealing with everything in a gym and, and questioning yourself and everything, yet you, you went through this transformation and it allowed you to see certain things. But why? Why did it allow you to see it? Was there something that, that you could think about inside of you to, to find that? Did you have to go? Was there something in your heart that was telling you something different at that point? Yes, actually it was. The why was that I wasn't being my authentic true self. And so when I realized I was not allowing people to see all of my gifts, I would allow them to see certain gifts, but then I didn't want them to see all of my gifts, meaning, oh my gosh, they're going to think I'm a little crazy if I help them this way. Or it's that vulnerability of really allowing everyone to see you. And so when I realized that I wasn't allowing that, that's what was really happening in the energy space of the gym, myself, my clients. And because being vulnerable and really allowing people to see us is what brings us together, the connection. And I would allow them to see certain parts of my life, but not all of them. And at that time as well, I was in a relationship where I knew it wasn't the right relationship as well. So I was really going through a period of shedding out a lot of things that no longer served me. And so all of this came up pretty much at once. So it was the relationship coming up. It was um, the gym coming up, everything that it takes to run the gym, certain clients, uh, you know, and any circumstances, situations coming up. It was like everything surfacing at one time. And it was really time for me to take a stand for what Jeanette wanted, what Jeanette believes and being very authentic and just completely putting it out there. Yeah, I I fully agree with you because there's a lot of people that maybe are afraid. They're afraid of exposing who they really are and getting out there and telling their their story and everything. And in your case, because I I know like your your background and people have see, saw you and, and they see your pictures and and this is the way they picture you as that as that and yet that's not who you really are there you there, there's a there's on on a deeper level so maybe the relationships and i'm not sure that you had gotten in or even the, oh, even the other person was based on that other Jeanette and not who you really are right correct correct absolutely and that was a big thing is everybody viewed me as who they saw on the magazine cover who they saw 
in the competition pictures who they saw in the trophies with the pictures. So that's how I was viewed. And I knew I was always my own marketing. This is what everybody was looking at. I couldn't let anybody else see what I was really going through in a relationship or how I really felt about anything like that was who I was to them. And so for that, for people to truly see there's so much more than just that, that's just the exterior, that there's so much more that's deep within me, which is really getting people to have their own emotional breakthroughs in their life so that they truly can live the life of their dreams. But I had to go through that first in order to help all of my clients and everybody that I come in contact. And by me not being vulnerable in my authentic self is such a, it's, how do you say it? It's, it's me almost being selfish of not being able to share my gift with others. And I really had to get that. And it took me some time to get that, that by me not doing what I'm called to do, my purpose and passion and allowing people to see me for who I truly am. I'm not out there helping people the way I need to, which is on a much deeper, deeper level, a much more personal connection level, an emotional level, a spiritual level. And that takes us to a whole different realm of opportunities and possibilities. Okay, so we we got the what, we got the why. Now, if you were to think back on the process that you went through in terms of transforming and if you could break it down into either three tips or three strategies or, in essence, just three bullet points, three things, those three things, just think about it, that the listeners now can apply it into their own life that's helped you, that's helped you to, to grow, to transform everything. What would those three things be? The three things for sure. Number one is truly surround yourself with people that have your best interests at heart, that only want to see you succeed, and that only want to help you to see you grow. And they have accomplished quite a bit by me being around those people that I was like, wow, this is great. Look where they've come from. Look what they've done. You know, and it's who we associate ourselves with. And we always hear that, like who you spend the most time with is a big reflection of who you're going to be. And it really is that it is really finding those right people who you are constantly having in your circle. And as I did that, my circle continued to get smaller and smaller because it was truly my hardcore soul people that were behind me and with me the entire time, but having their support, regardless if it was two, three, four, or five, that meant like I had 10,000 behind me because of the power that they had, their power of their mindset, their power of their love and their power of support and encouragement. So number one, I would definitely say really support yourself with people that are for you and that can give you any tips and help and connections. Like they're not afraid to give you any of their information that has helped them succeed. These are people that truly, truly know the gift of what it is to give to someone else. You receive 10 times greater. So tip number one would be that. Tip number two is I really did take a deep dive into personal development. So I would definitely say get into some personal development work, whether it's seminars workshops, there's books, and really just get deeper into yourself because these personal development workshops that I did helped me to actually zone in on some emotional issues that I didn't even know were there, but needed to be exposed so I could start to free up even more of my authentic self and to be who I truly am. So That was huge. And in those personal development seminars and workshops, I've met some of the greatest people that are still in my life and that have been my biggest supporters as well. So when you're with like-minded people who only want to pursue, you know, more awesome experiences in their life and they want to be the best people they can be, then, you know, you create these relationships and this personal development can turn into so many other things. And so, It just opened up a whole different aspect of my life. 
So I would say definitely do that. Do some, do some self work is what I call it. It's self work. Some people are always like personal development. Well, it's self work. We're really doing inner self work. We spend a lot of time on the exterior. Now it's time to do spend the time on the interior. And tip number three, which really helped my transformation as well was actually yoga, really getting myself into becoming one with my breath, my body, my movement, my thoughts. It helped me to slow it down because in the fitness industry and in the gym and all my competitions, it was go, 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 work out hard, hit it hard. You got to be the best. You got to do the best, which means you do more, not less. You push, push, push. And so by focusing on a whole different aspect for myself, getting myself into yoga, I was really becoming one with my body, my mind and my body. It allowed me to slow down my thoughts. It allowed me to truly feel the breath and it allowed me to learn more of the alignment of my own body and what each pose helped to represent. It also helped me to open up the most tight areas from all the weightlifting I had done over the years. And it really allowed me to start meditating more. So it helped me to find that stillness. And in that stillness, I received just a lot of answers to some of my questions. I would receive a lot of create creative ideas by allowing our minds to just be still. And so Yoga was a huge part of my life. Then I became, went on the journey of becoming a certified yoga instructor, which changed me even more so. And then this is where my whole method of boot yoga was developed was because we need all of it, the balance of it. Yes, we need to work out, but we also need yoga. We also need the stillness. So boot yoga is a fusion of basically boot camp yoga and meditation. And so that would be tip number three is allow yourself meditation time, stillness. So it could be yoga for some people. It could be Tai Chi. It could be such a different, uh, there's so many things out there, but something that allows us to be and not do so much. You know, Jeanette, I love your story. I love your story of, of transformation, of going through the challenges and everything. And the three tips that people can use absolutely are powerful tip number one you know and i'm going to just bring it up briefly so tip number one is surround yourself in this, in essence with the right people the people that support you because the truth is that successful people truly successful people will be there to support you to help you raise up and i'm glad that you disconnected from a lot of other people out of your life because that's really important that you only have the ones that are going to be there to support you. So, yes, tip number one, folks, get with the right people. You know, the thing about fly with eagles and not with turkeys. Number two tip you mentioned is personal development. And from Napoleon Hill to many others, and it's been going on for generations and generations, personal development is really, really, really important Mm -hmm. because we have to look within ourselves. What can we do to continue the process of improvement? And it's not just something that's just now. It's a continuing process throughout our life. And, yes, get out there, read good books, get into workshops, go to seminars, watch programs, take courses, anything that's going to continue your personal development, because it's going to help you in every aspect of your life, from your personal life to your professional life. And number three, yoga. Yoga is not just about the the physical aspects of it, even though it helps with flexibility and strength and everything in core development. There's the mental aspect of it, the mindful, the, the, the breathing that helps you to to Get into that calm breath, which is very, very important. Yes. And if you really want to engage the the thinking part of your brain, yoga is a perfect complement to help you with that. And I think Jeanette calls it mind, body, and spirit. It's perfect for that. So, Jeanette, uh, I want to, again, thank you for being an amazing guest and being on the show. And 
where would people be able to reach you, uh, give like your, your website information, and where would they be able to contact you? And I know that on your website you offer some freebies if they sign up for your your list there, right? Yes, I'm very excited. JeanetteOrtega.com is getting a remodel, a little facelift. And so please go to JeanetteOrtega.com. And Jeanette is with one N. And it, you can receive, when you put in your email address, you receive my very first free audio meditation. And this meditation is all about peace. It's about an eight minute long meditation. And it's just to like bring awareness to peace. Just let your body calm down. And what studies have shown is how, whether you want to call it prayer, meditation, stillness, it actually causes a whole different cellular level transformation. It literally changes our cells. And so it's so important that I don't believe people really grasp that and how it completely can change you on the inside. So feel free to listen to that as many times a day. It has helped me quite a bit. And I just wanted to share that too, is even just eight minutes a day. If you start with that, start with two minutes, three minutes, but something to really calm you down. So you'll get that. You'll also get my 10 tips of how to live a healthy and fit lifestyle in 2017. So you will get that PDF as well. And so I'm going to be having a lot of audio courses coming up, online courses, a lot of amazing workshops. And so I'm very excited to offer all of that. I also have a blog called fitnessfoodfashion.com. You can follow that as well. And if you ever are in our area, you can come out to Extreme Results Fitness and check out extremeresultsfitness.net. And we just have so much going on. So I'm excited about my book, the new book that's coming out in March called The Little Black Book of Fitness. So we have quite a few uh, co-authors, amazing co-authors in there. My partner is Kyle Wilson, who was the founder of Jim Rohn International for 18 years. Amazing man. He is my partner in that, but we have some amazing co-authors such as Be Real from Cypress Hill. Hey, he's going to be sharing his stories and tips about how, you know, health and fitness has kept him and his stamina while being on tour. We have Mike Messina, which is The Biggest Loser for season 13 of The Biggest Loser. And so many others that are just sharing their stories of their transformation of how truly fitness is not just the physical, but what it has created for them in their lives. Yes, and I would suggest... Especially you're, you're here at the School of Transformation. Follow Jeanette's tips. Get her books. Go to her website. Grab her information. Because it's all about transformation. Jeanette is all about transformation. And she teaches transformation. So if, if anybody out there is looking for an amazing speaker, Jeanette is available. I can attest to that and so can many, many others, including Brian Tracy, by the way. So. So again, Jeanette, I want to thank you for having been on the very first episode of the School of Transformation. I'm so honored. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the School of Transformation podcast. Again, the very first episode. And make sure you go to the schooltransformation.com and also bobchote.com. And there you can sign up to get free download, bobshow.com is one on confidence, and you can get regular notifications of upcoming episodes of School of Transformation at the school school of transformation.com. And again, remember to go to JeanetteOrtega.com and grab her freebies as well. And again, I want to thank you for having tuned in to today's podcast. Thanks for listening to the School of Transformation podcast. You can find us at bobchote.com and make sure to grab the ultimate 10-step self-confidence cheat sheet.